It's a kickstart for the gold at one local swim meet. Plus, a makeover of a different kind for the South Bank. And how did these kids roll through their summer? We'll show you ahead on JPTV. Welcome to JPTV, I'm Garrett Teague. And I'm Pam Roman, thanks for watching. So today's show is bittersweet, at least for me, because I am losing my co-host. Yeah, that's why we're all black today, it is a sad. My wife and I are moving all the way to Oregon to get a little bit closer to family. And while we definitely wish Garrett and his family all the best, if I cry during today's show, it's his fault. I apologize in advance, but we do have a show to do, so let's get on with it. And we start with a story that has kept a lot of folks busy this summer. It's a downtown site many have been waiting for. Water taxis carrying passengers back and forth across the St. Johns River. In early August, the city of Jacksonville made good on its commitment to have the water taxis operating in time for the Jacksonville Jaguars' first preseason game. This following several weeks of no service after the previous provider chose to end its city contract. The city made a series of quick decisions in its efforts to get the boats back in the water and admits that it made some mistakes and also learned some lessons along the way. But the commitment to return the water taxi service to downtown paid off, and with the help of local businessman Harry Frisch, the Sea Charm and Nature's Choice were inspected, approved, and in the water in time for game day. I love it. I missed it when they left in June, and I'm glad to have them back. I think it's great for new businesses to come here. I think it's great for pedestrians. I think the taxi is splendid for the city. Lakeshore Marine will operate the taxis under a temporary contract with the city while negotiating a longer-term arrangement. During Jaguar season and while construction continues along the South Bank Riverwalk, the water taxis will operate three sites during the week, the Jacksonville Landing, Friendship Fountain, and a temporary site along the South Bank. During football games and other stadium events, the service will also drop off and pick up passengers at Metropolitan Park Marina. Fees for the one-way trips are $5 for adults and $4 for ages 3 to 12 and passengers over 65. Round-trip fees are $7 for adults and $5 for ages 3 to 12 and passengers over 65. Children under 3, ride free. For more information on the water taxi, visit jacksparks.com. For JPTV, I'm Pam Roman. Water taxi stops along the South Bank River Walk are soon to be a part of a new look downtown. Pam and I recently headed up to the 38th floor of the Peninsula Building to get a bird's eye view of what's going down. It's hard not to notice all the construction taking place along Jacksonville's South Bank Riverwalk. Lots of barges and cranes and concrete piles are peppered all along the One Mile Waterfront Park. It's part of the final stages of a development project that's been debated and discussed since 2010. Now that it's near completion, what can residents and visitors expect? The, the structure, the way we're designing it, is going to have, from the river view, it's going to have fantastic curb appeal. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look very well built. It's going to last a long time. It's going to have beautiful lighting that's consistent all the way up and down. So when you look across to the South Bank, you're going to see an expanse of, you know, access. The Haskell Company is handling the design build for the $17 million project. The basics include ADA accessibility, improved lighting, and a 40 to 50 year lifespan. Then there are the wow factors, like these unique shade structures and the bold colors in the pavers. Two floating docks are also being added to provide additional public access to the St. Johns River. And when night rolls around, the walk will display lighting that can change colors depending on the event or time of year. Everything is expected to be complete by February 2015. Uh, this has been one long, long in the hopper, and we're really, it's going to be great to get it finally constructed and open to the public. Uh, it's been, you know, a few years going, so yes. And to see a new structure, co fully concrete, sustainable, 50-year life, that was the original intent. We're really excited about that. Well, for Garrett's last show, we are taking our segments on the road to some of his favorite parks. Yeah, and we're right here at Hannah Park, which is the site of our next story. 
This group of kids is spending their summer at Hannah Park with Jack's Park's Ocean Camp. And they have plenty of activities to choose from like surfing, playing at the splash park, exploring the nature trails, and of course spending tons of time on the beach. Well, I get to swim all day at Ocean Camp and other camps that I've been to. You only get to swim for 45 minutes. It's just really, really fun. I like mostly to like be inside the water because we have more freedom than we would at any other camp. We do a variety of different activities here, whereas you're just not subjected to one thing. You're, you're taking in all of what Hannah Park has to offer. There's been a few of them that I've watched try to surf and couldn't stand up on a board, and by the end of it, they're able to uh, stand up and ride a wave. And then there's some that were very shy when they first came here, and through the sessions, they were able to be a little more outgoing and make more friends here, here at the camp. And ultimately, these kids are finding, you know, friends for life through this, and I think that that's really important. Um, there are kids who, you know, have never surfed before, have maybe gone to the beach once or twice, you know, and they leave, you know, just very, very accustomed to the water, stronger swimmers, safer swimmers, because they're aware of, you know, all the different hazards and dangers that the beach, um, you know, compose. But it's really humbling and, you know, kind of exciting to see them get so excited and so um, happy to come out here. If you like the beach and you like to like be inside the water a lot, then you should be coming to Ocean Camp. So stay connected with Jack's Parks and surf's up at Ocean Camp next summer. Coming up, an exploration for the entire family. And what do these tests say about Jacksonville's river? It's all ahead. Stay with us. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice, or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. Hi. I'm Willie Coates with Jack's Parks Aquatics. Florida is surrounded by water, which is why it's so important to learn how to swim. Not knowing how to swim greatly increases the chances of drowning no matter how old you are. So sign up for swim lessons and keep you and your kids safe. Don't rely on a lifeguard, rely on yourself. Help us waterproof Jacksonville. This message is brought to you by Waterproof Jacksonville, Jack's Parks, and attorney Wayne Hogan of the Terrell Hogan Law Firm. Welcome back to Jack's Parks TV from Hannah Park. Well, this summer, Jack's Park's newest urban parks initiative hit the ground running and never looked back. Wreck and Roll Jack's opened in 11 parks this summer, all located in and around the city's urban core. And it averaged more than 200 kids a day during its eight-week run. Its main goal was to give kids a place to be that was free, safe, and fun. You know, the, we do it for, for the youth of the city, for the youth of the, of, of the community. Um, and and for their parents, you know. Um, we understand that there are a lot of working parents out there who need a little of assistance and that's what we're kind of here for. It mean a lot to have this type of community event in a park because it keep the kids out of trouble. Kids, when they come out of school, they don't have nothing to do. So if you don't have nothing to do, especially around here, you know, they're going to turn to something else to do. So, I mean, it's a good thing that y'all got going on. Attorney Steve Padgett gave $50,000 to fund the program. The money made it possible for the city to hire current and retired coaches to staff the parks along with summer jobs participants. A small group of local artists combined their creative talents to paint these two retired ambulances. They were used to deliver recreational supplies to the sites. And local radio station Pure 103.7 hosted a live remote at Grunthal Park to help spread the word about the program. 
Other businesses, nonprofits, and city staff also spent time at the different sites. And from what we've seen and heard, it looks like the adults had as much fun this summer as the youngsters. If I had to die and go to heaven, I'd come back to Grunthal Park. You know, I, I thank the Paget brothers uh, for giving us the opportunity to uh, work in the park and work with the children in the, in the area. You know, they have been uh, the most outstanding kids you could be around. You know, you, you can't get rid of them. You know, they stay around you like laying on clothes. You know, so I, I just enjoyed it all along, some along. Wreck and Roll Jacks even received national attention. Visitors from the National League of Cities recently came to town to observe the program for best practices. So now with one successful summer under its belt, city leaders are already looking for ways to make the program better for next year. You know, I think it's going to be bigger and better. We're going to you know, really come back to the parks that, have, that we've made an impact on and try to identify others that, that really need the same type of program in their neighborhoods. Wow, that looked like a lot of fun. Sometimes I miss being a kid. I think we're both still kids at heart. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we love covering that story and the one coming up next. Take a look. For 10 weeks this summer, local parents and kids of all ages have been playing detective in the outdoors, and they all came to Ready Point Preserve for one more adventure before heading back to school. So today was the Family Nature Hunt finale of our 10 weeks of summer family program, and we're working with St. John's Riverkeeper and Expedition First Coast. The day featured a demonstration teaching kids about salinity, water quality, and wildlife in the river. And even though it may have put some people to sleep, it still helped answer some important questions about the river. You mean it came from outer space? No, it came here from the ground. And after that question was answered, it was time to hit the trails for a sensory scavenger hunt, where there were plenty of things to see, touch, hear, smell, and discover. Just like the Nature Hunt program, today was all about getting the entire family to spend time together in nature and yeah, learning right. about Smart. the environment. I think once you get kids outside and into nature and they can really experience it firsthand, touch things, smell things, see things on their own and just make that connection, it really teaches them to want to protect it so it builds the environmental stewardship. Yes, um, I heard that manatees are becoming distinct. You know, you well, when we get whole families out enjoying the process, it's something they can talk about when they go home. A lot of times when children are in school, and we do lots of school programs, and I, uh, we really enjoy them, and I know the kids learn a lot. But then they go home, and at the dinner table, I, you know, not often do the parents know as much about the St. John's River. So here, we have been able to ignite the whole family. And hopefully they will be talking about this when they go home tonight and then many months to come. If you need any more reasons to get outside, young Scott Busey will try to persuade you. I just try to persuade them about what nature, with what nature's like, and what they can, how much they can do, and how much of a variety thing, of things there are to do. While, you, while on the other hand, if you stay inside, there's not so much it, as you, that you can do. So head over to JacksParks.com, FunForFirstCoastKids.com. St. John's Riverkeeper.org or Expedition First Coast's Facebook page to find out more fun outdoor activities for the entire family. Later in the show, we'll learn about one man who inspired generations of kids in Jacksonville. But first, a kayak, a paddle, and a trip on the river. It's just ahead. Can you tell? Can you tell? Does it look like I'm fighting a disease? Fighting. Fighting. Fighting for my life. Like my life expectancy is shorter than yours? There's no outward sign. But we're battling every day. Every day. Every day. Worrying. Testing. Treating. Fighting. Fighting. Diabetes. Diabetes has been called a silent epidemic. It's time to call it out for what it is. Help us raise awareness, hope, and vital funding. Help us stop diabetes. This message brought to you by USFA and your local fire department. Stay fire safe this summer. Only use grills outdoors, away from siding and deck railings. Clean grills often and remove grease or fat buildup. Make sure your gas grill lid is open before lighting. Have a three-foot safe zone around grills and campfires. Keep kids and pets clear of the area. Dispose of coals after they cool in a metal can. Never leave grills, fire pits, and patio torches unattended. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov. Are you looking for a place to report a pothole in your neighborhood? Or is there litter in a park? Maybe you just want to find the trash pickup schedule. 
Well, 630 City is your answer for that and many more city services. Just call the friendly staff at 630 City or go online to 630city.coj.net to easily report any issues in your neighborhood. At 630 City, we want to be your trusted resources. We're here to serve you. In case you didn't notice from our last story, we have crossed the intercoastal to another one of Garrett's favorite parks, Castaway Island Preserve. Well, we all know the St. John's River is a major part of our city, but how do we know when the river is healthy? Well, JPTV went out with the city's environmental quality division on the research vessel Animal Cloud to get that answer. Well, the St. John's River is one of Jacksonville's best resources, and we want to protect that resource for public use and for the, um, the critters and the animals that call the St. John's River home. So we go out on a boat to 10 designated sites all up and down the St. John's River within Duval County, and we analyze for nutrients and some other parameters like BOD, biochemical oxygen demand, and uh, dissolved oxygen, salinity, connectivity, and solids. We just try to find out what's going on with the river. The data is compiled and sent out to various agencies where it's used to monitor trends and the status of the river. This all sounds very scientific, but why is it important to you and me? The St. John's River is a very complicated um, ecosystem, and so it changes daily. And uh, in order to keep track of you know, the health of the river, you have to be out here all the time uh, you know, finding out what's going on. The quality of the river or the health of the river really defines the health of the community in some ways. And the river needs to be healthy. A lot of people use it for recreation. If you don't have a boat, you can still come to these parks and, and still enjoy the river or go fishing. And so it's, it's critically important to the, to the city. To get an in-depth look on the status of the St. John's River, check out the latest State of the River report at sjrreport.com and find out more ways the Environmental Quality Division is working to protect the environment for you and your family by going to coj.net. A lot of people spend time taking care of the river and some people spend time enjoying it, like our summer intern Don White who produced this next Kayak Jack series. Take a look. Hey, I'm Joe Crespi and I'm with First Coast Outfitters and I'm here today with Jack's Parks at the Arlington Road Boat Ramp. We're here today to do some kayaking on the St. John's River, but before we do that, let's go over some safety tips. When paddling at Arlington Boat Ramp, there's a couple things to keep in mind. You should always check the tide and weather reports. Be sure to bring along a communication device, whether it's a cell phone or VHF radio. Always have a life vest or PFD, a whistle, and make sure you have a flow plan that lets someone know when and where you'll be back. All right, let's go for a paddle. Be careful when launching at the Arlington boat ramp. The ramp has a tendency of getting slick year round. Make sure you're wearing some form of foot protection when launching. When you're out on the water, it's always important to be aware of your surroundings. Boat traffic can be heavy at times, so make sure you're aware of that. Another thing is you always want to make sure that you're checking the currents. We've got extremely strong currents through to downtown during incoming and outgoing tides. Once you get on the water, you can head north or south. If you paddle south, you head towards Exchange Club Island where you can get out and stretch your legs and enjoy all views from all sides of the island. If you go a little bit further, you'll be able to get a great view of the downtown skyline. If you head north, you'll pass by Jacksonville University and be able to check out the campus. If you keep going, you'll reach the point where the Trout River meets the St. John's River. This is where the river turns east towards its final destination, the Atlantic Ocean. Well, thanks for coming paddling with us today. For more information on paddling trails, go to jacksparks.com or check us out on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. After the break, it's more than a sport. It's an outlet that spans generations. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Joni Maskell with Swimming Safari Swim School. Florida leads the nation in accidental drownings for children under age five. We need to prevent this. Most of these accidents happen right at home, so protect your kids by securing your pools. Please put up walls, gates, locks, and other barriers all around your pools and all your swimming areas. 
help us waterproof Jacksonville. This message brought to you by Waterproof Jacksonville, Swimming Safari Swim School, and attorney Wayne Hogan of the Terrell Hogan Law Firm. Chris Domine is a husband, father, an athlete, even an Iron Man. But 10 years ago, Chris's kidneys were failing. The doctor said, if you don't do dialysis, if you don't get a kidney transplant, you are going to die. Then Chris received a second chance, made possible by an organ donor. Your well-being changes from loss of hope to better times ahead. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Global warming is a problem. Problem. It's a problem. I wanted to do something to become more energy efficient. To protect the environment. To protect the future. So I turned to Energy Star for help. Energy Star is helping me be part of the solution. Everyone can join the fight against global warming. Go to energystar.gov to learn what you can do. Together. Together. Together, we can all make a difference. Thanks for sticking with us. We moved over here to the west side to another one of my favorites, Tilly K. Fowler Regional Park. That's right. It's also the home to our famous park naturalist and frequent show guest, Gene Schubert, who has nothing to do with our next story from the Cecil Aquatic Center. This guy may not be the Oscar statue, but for the swimmers and spectators attending this year's Jack's Parks Division swim meet, he means a lot more than just winning a category. Well, it's a great opportunity for the kids to be able to um, just get out and swim at all different levels of competition. We have kids that have never swam before and kids that have been swimming for several years. So it's nice to be able to see the kids grow from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So it's a really great opportunity for kids that might not be able to join a bigger swim team um, that can out here and have the same opportunities. This year's meet was held at the Cecil Aquatic Center. Nearly 900 swimmers competed and all 15 Jacks Park swim teams were represented. The competition was held the first week in August, so teams had six weeks to prepare. Fletcher, Oceanway, and Ed White Pools took first place in their divisions. But when or not, most of the competitors were there for one simple reason. They love to swim. Um, it's a lot of fun to come out here every year to swim with kids with similar interests. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work though to get here though. So it's a good reward. I think it's fun because we get to see all of our friends and we get to compete and I like competing against people so yeah. Um, it means a lot to me because like, we're all out here doing what we like to do and just competing and having fun, so yeah. For more information on Jack's Parks Aquatic Programs year-round, visit online at jacksparks.com. Our next piece features a local legend who used swimming to give others an opportunity to succeed. He was an icon on the corner of 4th and Jefferson, which was called Jefferson Street Swim Pool. He treated us as one. It might be 45 of us, we was one. And what he taught one, he taught all. That's the kind of man he was. The man they are talking about is Julius Ginyard. After losing his parents when he was only nine, he went on to become a Navy sailor, Golden Glove boxer, Olympic trial competitor, and finally settled in Jacksonville, where he dedicated the rest of his life to molding the next generation through his constant presence at the Jefferson Street Pool. The Jefferson Street Pool was one of the only outlets the black youth of the city had at that time. Um, he made it into a multifaceted facility for the youth of the city. Um, we had swim meets and swimming lessons during the day, on the weekends, downstairs, uh, where the equipment was kept. He had racket hops for the youth uh, around the city. And then on the weekends and uh, later at night after the pool closed, he trained Golden Glove boxers. It became his passion to want to reach out to all the children. He ran into a lot of underprivileged children in the area where the pool was. And those children didn't have fathers. 
in their lives. They had mothers that may have been working two jobs. And so he felt a need to instill structure in their lives. And a lot of them, for that reason, turned out to go off to college and do things that they probably would not have done had it not been for him teaching them little things about life. Uh, Mr. Ganyal saved a lot of us. He saved a lot of us. He established a whole lot for us and, and, and motivate us more to be more successful in life later on. In that area, during my time in the Blodgett home, I think a lot of us will probably be in jail, in prison. And like I said, Mr. Ginyard had a lot of influence on all of us. I don't care if you was a girl, woman, whoever. He created the first all-black swim team at the time, and many of those members still get together today. Well, the Sweet Hustle swim team was immaculate. We always place when we swim against competitors. From Miami to Carolina, we never got beat, not our swimming team. He, he was a, a motivator. He kept us out of trouble, you know. And he was the kind of gentleman that when you left him, you wanted to see him again. Although he passed away in 2009, his legacy lives on at the Jefferson Street Pool, but now bears his name and in the lives of the young men and women he inspired. And I think he is proud because he was able to see that pool named after him. You know, he was alive when it happened. I think it made him very proud to have had that done in his lifetime. He never gave up on himself. He never gave up on his job, on the youth. He just always was one of those that was always pushing you and driving you in a fatherly way, in a very good way. Anywhere I went, I would know someone that he touched their lives, and so I never met a stranger. They always, he taught me swimming. That was always the, that's the first person to teach me swimming, and, and they always had something positive to say. He made a difference in my life. A whole lot of other people lied that he made a difference in. And, and he, he is a, a monumental, you know, he's a legend. Well, that's it for this edition of JPTV and sadly, my final show. But even though you won't be able to see this beautiful face each month, you should still stay connected with us. And you're going to stay connected with us too, right? So let's tell him how to do that. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and... Google+. Plus. Absolutely. <laughs> I think I'll remember. And don't forget about jacksparks.com and jacksparkstv.com. So I guess I'll see you here next time. And until then, I mean, I will see you in the parks. I cannot believe you are leaving me here to do this all by myself. I just can't believe it. It'll be hard to follow this, but I think you can do it. <laughs> you ready? Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bubble. Bubble. Now go online yourself. Oh. You really happy about that? Uh, I'm concentrating. Three. I got the smile. Here we go. Three. Yeah. It's the most violent finger point ever. Do you see it? It's like five, four, three. <laughs> Turns out it's awkward. Okay, okay. Yeah. Here it Ryan. That's my middle name. When I was in trouble, my mom would always get Ryan. And so I do it to myself. It's really sad, but You should mess up mess up because you've shushed me. What are you saying over there? We're ready. <laughs> Tell me how good you look. Yeah. Does it look weird with my leg here on that one? No. Okay, good. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Three, two. Your leg's been here the whole time. I know. I just realized yeah, it. Yeah, you thought it might look weird? I just realized it. It's just natural. It's there. But... So, yeah, I should be here. Uh... We are recording.